This episode, just like every other episode, is sponsored by Discem Living Fit. With a wide range of fitness products, supplements, tailored to whatever need you may have. Whatever stage in your fitness journey you may be, Discem Living Fit has the products for you. We'll just get straight into it, bro. Sure. Yeah, we'll just cruise. All right. We don't well, need a plan. Yeah, you can, uh, actually, you can just pull that. Uh, hop is fine now. Put it down a bit. All right. So how you doing, bro? Awesome, man. You good? Great stuff. Can't complain. Having a good weekend? Ah, uh, for real? Yeah, like I'm just going through my head and trying to look where's the good and where's the bad. But actually, I think when I put on a leverage, too much good. What bad is there for you? Like, what do you see in your life that maybe is adding frustration or adding doubt or... You know, what is it that is taking away slightly from the good? If you had to truly look and think about it. Yeah, I think for me, it's the fear. It, like that anxiety of like, you know, having a lot of things in your head and you just, you know, scared how am I going to get where I want to get and, you know, what are the pieces that I have to put together to get where I want to get, you understand? So, because you, you, you kind of get scared and like, you know, I have my goals, but how am I going to, make these goals materialize mm. you understand so i think that's the, the the bad side the fear that i'm really uh uh like uh, facing at the moment yeah other than that i think uh i'm good buddy and that is that the goals and stuff like business and work related yeah like you know you look at all the, the things that you know probably like uh, i look myself i look back at myself five years back i'm like you know i wanted to be here I did make some goals, put them right, like I put them down on a piece of paper. And now the challenge is to make those goals materialize. You know, it's terms of relationship where you want to be in a relationship. And in terms of um, business, you know, uh, this is where you want it to be, but you're not yet there. You understand? Yeah. So you're not dating anyone now? No, <laughs> no, no relationship stuff? Yeah, yeah, actually at the moment I'm not. Uh, but uh, I mean, like, you know, you always... Uh, go through that journey you know mm. you get people they get out of your life you know and then you're trying to you know see how you get there and the dating scene for you like because obviously i mean we've throughout our dating life yeah and we've pretty much had social media uh -huh. but how do you think social media has affected relationships or affected your relationships or getting to know girls. I, I watched the interesting video, so I want to hear your perspective. Uh -huh. And then I'll tell you what I what I watched and which I think is true. I think on my side, I don't have a problem with it. Like, um, I feel like, you know, still social media gives a chance actually to meet different people and also to see um, like an hindsight about their life, you understand? Because, you know, when you look at the social media, you kind of get it. A chance to see what are these guys into? What is she into? You know, does she go to the gym? Is she very active? Does she like certain things? You understand? And it also helps you to match. You know, it gives you that leverage, like you know, to clearly be like, oh, this could be my match or not. You understand? Well, as when you meet a person, you still have to go through some period of time to understand them without like really hacking that thing because mm. i think social media gives you that a chance to hack someone's life easily yeah that's how i see it yeah so the video i watched the lady was saying yeah because of social media because you see all these people out there mm -hmm. you know comparing to maybe like our parents days where you would maybe get introduced to them or you would maybe meet them through family or meet them or however yeah you know and then you would you wouldn't be as exposed to as many potential suitors or whatever so you yeah. wouldn't be as exposed to as many girls or as many guys or as many partners that you could particularly be interested in okay so now people will the moment there's not like an instant connection they'll be like now nah, i can find someone else too yeah? instead of giving it a little bit more time to get to know them because back in the day yeah you would get in, start seeing someone or go on a date or whatever and slowly but surely you might not have that initial connection, but then you keep trying to see yeah. if there's that connection. Yeah. Whereas today with social media, it's, you know, there's not an in instant connection. It's fine. I can see a million other girls on my phone. Let me go try with them. So then it just, it stops people from actually trying just to get to know the people. It's a challenge because, you know, you have a lot of options, you know. Yeah. I think also uh, I, I was reading a book and then this guy was mentioning uh, 
uh, I think it was in the Art of War. I don't remember. No, it's not in Art of War. I think it's 48. 48, 48 Laws of Power. I think so. Robert Greene. Yeah, I think he mentioned about how, if I don't forget, and I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the book, but he mentioned, someone mentioned about like uh, this thing of like, organized uh, marriages. It's been there for so long. So now we're trying to get out of it. I think uh, it's been like it's been there before. I think nineteen hundred, like you know, like back mm. then. But now we're trying to change because society is changing, you know. And I think we need also to understand that we're not gonna be in that same place where you know, for quite long ages, marriages have been organized, like like they've been set up by the family, by you know, culture wise, you know, you, it wasn't like you know a normal thing for you to just go find someone and you know start doing anything. Families had to arrange that. But right now we're living in a, a society where you have to go and hunt for yourself. You understand? You do everything without actually having a validation of the family, but you put yourself first. So I think um, social media gives you both. You understand? And I think now the challenge that we are facing as the modern society, we have a lot of responsibilities as a person. You understand? During that time, your family had to step in and, you know, they could take some of the responsibilities for, from you to like pick for you. They mm -hmm. had some time, like your mother knew a lot of things, your dad knew a lot of things, so they, sh they could help you out to make a good choice. Whereas right now, you actually want to take everything. You know, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you... And you have to. Like, it's, you don't have an option of... Obviously, you might have family helping you with certain things. Yeah. But there's no way if I go to my mom and be like, okay, I'm ready to get married... Go find me a wife. She's going to be like, no, go you find see, your own wife. Yeah, things are changing. I think, and then social media comes in, I think, to help you out. But I think it's a tool. Mm. If you don't use it right, you're not going to get the good results. If you use it right, I'm sure. And you'd be like, oh, this is my person. Let me just stick with them, take some L's with them, and take some, you know, W's with them, the wins with them, mm. and see how it goes. If and it I, doesn't. Yeah, and I think those losses that you take, with obviously – if you get past that initial stage and you do want to be serious with the person, I think those losses yeah. help build that foundation of the relationship. True. And those losses and, you know, you could be in completely different career paths. She could be doing whatever. You could be doing whatever. Yeah. But just having her to go to her and say, you know, I lost this client or I'm struggling with this and having that support yeah. builds the relationship a lot because that, you know, vulnerability with your partner, it's – Builds more than, you know, if you go to her and be like, yo, I made 50K extra this month. Or if you went to her and say, I lost 50K this month. Yeah. I think that saying and going to her and showing that vulnerability will build more. So I think the loss, obviously you still want to win and you yeah. want to have lots of wins, but the losses, you know, form form that bond. True that, man. I, I mean, like, I think that's what you're looking at, partner. Non you look at someone who's going to be there for you, you know, someone who you're going to share you know, your life and, and life is all about the things that you face, you know? So I think, yeah, that, that that's my answer. Yeah. yeah. From the and question. like social media dating apps. I'm not so big with them. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I don't know, but it's, it's funny. Yeah. Right? I mean, some people like it. Some people don't. I've never really wanted to meet someone through that way of like that method. For me, it's just like, let's say Tinder, at least, at least initially, it was always just an app to be able to hook up with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was never really like, I'm serious about trying to find a wife. Let me go on Tinder. Like those kind of things were more like just hookup apps. Yeah, 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 yeah. So already, if you had to use that to try and meet someone, I think your mindset's already going to be like, no, this person's maybe not serious about a relationship. But also, uh, it's a challenge, like, uh, right now. I don't know, but it's it's a challenge right now. Like, you also can't just bump into someone. Yeah. How do you meet someone? <laughs> meet them at the yeah. gym. That's about it. Yeah, like, uh, chances of just going into someone and be like, hey, you know, it's it's also hard. Like, you know, they're going to look at you like, have you been doing this You're all the creep. time? What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. So, it, you have actually, I think te technology, like I said, it's a tool. It's You can use it in every way to get what you want. Mm. I'm, I'm sure that people that are successful from Tinder... Facebook, whatever, you know, because I think like we we have a lot of options, actually. We are living in the best world. That's why when you asked me about my life, I look at the bad side. It's not so much, you understand, because I mean, the good is too much because you look at what we're having right now. 
all the options of technology. You know, last time I was, I was, I was, th- I was in my head thinking like, you know, there was a time when like electricity was the big thing. Mm. You know, there was a time when radio was the big thing, TV was the big thing, uh, creating, you know. Now it's like AI. Yeah, steamers. Like steamers were the big thing, like mm. traveling from one continent to another continent, you know, having, you know, those big boats. But we have everything. Yeah. That's yeah. how insane it is. Bro. Yeah, like there's nothing, obviously there is still, there's not really major developments in technology. Yeah, there's still good developments. Yeah. But I don't see us, it's like there's not overnight going to be flying cars. Like whereas if we look at the last 15 years of technology development, mm. it's exponential. The growth and the development has been exponential. If you look at phones of the last 15 years, yeah. I think if you look at phones in the next 15 years, I don't know if they'll develop as fast as the previous 15 years. I don't know. Maybe with like Neuralink with Elon Musk, you're not going to need phones anymore. You're going to be able to like have some chip in your brain yeah, yeah, yeah. that's able to phone someone or send someone a DM like, I don't know, that's right. It's it gives just me chills. It gives me chills. I mean, like, you mentioned AI, by the way. I want to ask you, how do you find AI on your side? I think it's a great tool to use. Yeah. It's There's a lot of, like, let's say with this podcast, Yeah. there's methods in AI that helps me edit the podcast quicker. Yeah. There's clips, like AI plugins that you can generate clips for, yeah. you, for reels and stuff. So... You know, it speeds up the work process. It simplifies the work process. You can get 10 people's work yeah. done in the space. It used to take you to do two. So, like, there's a lot of great developments. And for me, I'm all for it. I think for me, AI is, like, if we are looking for pieces that are going to make us go. Because I used to watch this. Um, I don't know if you know Flintstone. So it's it's an like old cartoon, bro. Like I used Flintstones. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they you used know. to drive the cars and they yeah, would run like with their legs. Yeah, bro. Because those guys were actually in space. Yes, yeah. And they were always learning from different, uh, like planet to another planet. And I like you into the, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. So comics and all that. Yeah. And I feel like you know it's so like hilarious how the human mind can work. And I'm sure that we're gonna go to the galaxy. That I'm one of those people. And I feel like you know, at one point. The human race is gonna leave Earth, and they start living in space, like continents. And do you think we'll be able to develop the technology to yeah. get to outer space before we destroy the planet that we're on? Like, do you think we'll destroy Earth before we're able to leave? I think, uh, in uh, like, just you know, opinion and perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't really understand yeah, yeah. the science behind it. Yeah, but I think because from my side. I think everything that we imagine, we can make. Mm. So I feel like, you know, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, the human brain would have been like, would be developing like, because it would yeah, develop yeah. like insanely. You know what I mean? And the things that you feel that are impossible, they're going to be possible. And they're going to actually laugh at us. The same way the first person looked at the mirror mm. and be like, am I seeing myself? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel with AI, it's just one of those pieces that we needed to create like magic mm. and make it reality. Because I feel like we're going to go to space. It's just like, you know, we're going to start leaving that side and Earth will be an old thing. It That's was, how I feel, bro. It's fascinating to think that we could actually go to space. And I'm, if you look at, you know, that submarine that had that massive issue and they yeah, yeah, yeah. like, imploded and they su- they drowned and everything or suffocated and then yeah, essentially, yeah. essentially drowned you know that can happen and submarines have been something that have been around for since like world war one and two you know yeah and that still have failed so i think we're still very far away from being able to true. travel properly to space true true i don't think like well at least we can travel also, yeah, yeah. Did we actually go to the moon? <laughs> okay, we, but that's we'll get onto. We'll, I want to get onto. Um, <laughs> Do you have conspiracy doubts? theories? Do you have doubts? Nah, not really. No, nah, I think it happened. Yeah I, yeah, I like to think I'm a contrarian and try oppose, like, and have conspiracy theories. But you know, the thing is, yes, we can travel to space. Yeah. If the moon landing, all of that was 100 percent legit, which nine time probably was, but we have to develop somewhere to live first. So people need to travel to the yeah. Mars, whatever, and build a civilization. 
So, yeah, we can travel to space, yeah, yeah. but how do you build a civilization there? Like, do you have a massive craft that lands and that craft that landed on Mars becomes yeah. the civilization and then you expand? But look at the tech movies that we've been watching, like, you know, the Star Wars and, you know, uh, like many of them have gone out of my head. Yeah. But uh, you've seen that they've created those big shuttles, like those big mm. things that, you know, that they created. And when you look at them, they were massive. You yeah. Know? And they almost live on there. Yeah. Cause and then you can slowly build on the planet. Yeah. And I, and I think the, the, the life that we're living right now won't be the life that those people are going to live a thousand years from. Yeah, that's true. It's going to be different. You know, things that we actually enjoy right now, I'm sure they won't be the same thing that we enjoy. Just like, you know, right now, the things that, people that enjoyed like 2000 years back. It's not the same, mm. you know, the Greek life, yeah. is, those people lived. It's not what we're living right now. So I'm sure with take, someone would actually be able to sleep like for 10 days, mm. be in their head. You know what I mean? Like, Going to like cry or sleep or something. Yeah, because yeah. I mean like, like today things are so fast, you know, like, yes, days are running so fast. But I think with take, things will be different. Mm. days will, you know, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, time, time could be completely different to what we understand. Today. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's why like, I feel like, you know, things are going to be different, but still we are, you know, the generation that's going to create that. The fact that we've created movies about it, it means that we are capable of creating such mm. a thing because like we've actually made it become a reality in our heads, in movies. And that's a chance for us to like make it, you know, a reality in real yeah. life. But that's also what's interesting with when you watch movies. Yeah. And like, let's say it's movies from the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s even. Yeah. What they think, and they make it, a, it's a futuristic movie and what they make it look like the future is going to be like, if you look at Back to the Future. Yeah. You know, with skateboards, the, the hovering skateboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And certain technologies that they thought 30 years ago was going to be in 2020 or whatever. That's not, it's not even similar at all. Like, there was movies where it was, let's say it was filmed in the 80s, yeah. but it was set in 2010. Mm -hmm. And they, they thought there was going to be flying cars in 2010 yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And then 2010 came, yeah, no true, flying true, cars. True. 2023 yeah, right. came, no you're flying right, cars. Right. You know, we make movies now of like, let's say, even look at Star Wars, yeah. space travel and everything. And we say, okay, that's the year 2080. Yeah. We're going to get to 2080. We're probably still not going to have True. as much of what we think, or at least the direction of what we think the future is going to go could be completely different. I am an opt uh, like, are you an optimistic person? Yeah, to a degree. <laughs> to a degree. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pessimistic realist uh -huh. or an optimistic realist. So optimistic to an extent. Also, well, I'll ask your question first. Okay. Yeah, like I am, I am optimistic in general. Okay. All right. Okay, that's a good thing because for me, I feel like you know, looking at the touch screen right now, and looking at all the things we have at the moment, I do believe that we're gonna have a very like you know, enjoyable, fantastic future with with tech in terms of tech. Because for me, the first thing was Bluetooth. That shows you sending bro. songs where it <laughs> yeah. takes uh, like now it's airdrop where it's like you know? instant. Yeah, like uh, you or know, it was even it was infrared first. You see, sending like a song to your friend at uh, school through infrared. And that's a period of hundred years, bro. Yeah. Like between like hundred years, a lot of things have changed. You know what no, I mean? That's true. And I think with AI, we're gonna have a lot of elons. You know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah. and that's why for me, I look at you know, uh, like on the continent, the politicians. You know, I feel like you know. Uh, they are actually looking at things, yes, that matter right now. But only if also they look into technology. How can we actually have like 10 Elon Musk? How can we develop such minds? Because when you have uh, like 20 Elon Musks, it means that, you know, imagine what those people can do. Yeah. Look what one Elon Musk does. You know what I mean? So we need more of those people that can think and create things and take risks. You know? Do you think it's possible? How do you get more Elon Musks? Because he's like one in a million. I think there are a lot of people that are like Elon Musk, but they don't have the opportunities. Mm. Yeah, because I think Elon is lucky because he got the opportunity. Yeah, I think if so, if you look at, you know, like LeBron James, Tiger Woods, all yeah. these people, yes, they had talent. Yes, they had skill. Yeah. Yes, they worked hard. But everything worked out perfectly in their lives to get them to the point that they're at. Yeah. There could be someone who was as talented as golf as Tiger would have been, 
but they weren't trained the way Tiger was trained by his dad. They weren't as motivated, but they had the skill. So everything that Tiger experienced was yeah. perfect for him to get to where he needed to be. Yeah. You know, everything that happened for Elon Musk, you know, was perfect to get him to where he was. True. Growing up in South Africa, being bullied, then hating South Africa and hate, obviously not liking bullies and then, you know, being motivated by that and yeah. makes him work harder and all of these things. Whereas it could be someone as smart as Elon, but they weren't bullied. They weren't in a bad environment. So they never felt the need to work harder and keep going. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's all about, you know, those people at the top, those people, well, I say the top, it's not really like, I mean, I wouldn't want to be Elon Musk. I wouldn't want to really? be, I would not want to be Elon <laughs> Musk, bro. No, okay. You wouldn't like to be Elon Musk. I, wouldn't, actually, I don't want to be that famous. Uh, yeah. Like, don't, let's not look at the famous side. Okay. Let, us look at, like, let us look at the 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 benefits mm. of what Elon can bring to, yeah, the, yeah, world, to yeah, the society. Yeah. To you know, If I could help the world the way Elon Musk can, of course. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't want to not be able to go to a restaurant. I don't want to not be able to go to a gym. Without True. tons of people just swarm. I mean, if Elon Musk walks into Virgin Active here, he's going to be swarmed bad, by everyone. But I get what you're saying. You know, there's a saying that if, like, if the good comes with such things, mm. you're still going to take the good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wouldn't mind, like myself, I'm saying like, you know, if I'm Elon and everything happens like that, I'll, I'll take it. Mm. With everything that it comes well, with. Well, so they got so much money, you just book out the whole gym, tell everyone they and have I, to go. Yeah, and also, like, I feel like, you know, we like exaggerate their lives. Mm. You know we I, think that it's the certain way. Yeah, com- but I, I think he's, he's very calm. He lives a normal life. Like, he doesn't actually mind, you know, because he knows, you know, he can give time when, whenever it is. And if it doesn't really suit, he'll just move on with his mm. life. You know what I mean? So, but uh, going back to that, I feel like, you know, the more we have such people, the more we can actually be able to get the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like if some, this, if you, let's like, <laughs> let's look at, you know, creating, like if you look at the superhero movies yeah. where they will try to replicate and make another Superman. Yeah. Then that Superman that they replicated becomes bad. Okay. Or if you look like at iRobot where they make these robots and then there's like one robot that's bad and retaliates and fights oh, yeah. back. Like, that's a good possibility of happening. Of what? Like if we use AI to create more Elon Musks or something, mm-hmm. somewhere, somewhere, somehow, someone's going to make that one evil and like take over the, because Elon Musk essentially could take over the world if he really tried But we to. need the bad guys. Or as we, we need the bad guys. Yeah. Because they help, they help us actually become more resilient, mm-hmm. create more idea, like have more ideas, create more things for us to get where we want to get. Because without the without COVID, we wouldn't that's have true. gone here. That's true. You know what I mean? Like we need all those things in life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you know, uh, the other time I was thinking about Super Mario. I'm sure he played Super yeah, Mario. Yeah. I realized like now life is like Super Mario. Like you and I, we are like you know Mario. Like everything that is happening, we need to dodge it. The attention. Because you have your goals. That's the, 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 the queer. I think it was the princess that Mario was supposed to pick up, yeah? So to get your goals, which is the princess, you're going to face all those things. You know, the ants that you have to jump, everything. So, like, you need those bad things to happen for you to get to your princess. Mm. And it also, you know, it makes life, like, More enjoyable. enjoyable. Yeah. Because if you we, just walk straight to the princess, it's going to be like, oh, well, that was easy. What's the point? Yeah. And also you won't be creative. Mm. So, so we also need that kind of, you know, bad things, things not going on well, because then you can be able to actually create for you to get where you want to get. Yeah, the bad things in life put you in a position where you have to adapt, you have to grow, you have to learn. I don't get me wrong. No one wants it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> after the fact, though, after the fact, you kind of do, or you're glad at least that you went through it. Yeah, but no one wants to wake up with a bad life, bro. Not a bad life, but... Oh, challenges. Chal- I want you want to wake up with challenges. I want to wake up with challenges. Challenges that we want to face. You know, you want to expand your business. You want to grow. Yeah. You don't want it to be super easy. True. Because then everyone can do it. You know, I'm happy that it's difficult to diet. I'm happy that it's difficult to train. Because what's special about it if it's easy? What's special about achieving a good body or achieving business success or achieving you know, some sort of expansion 
if it was easy because then everyone could do it and then what's special about it yeah going back to the question that i was asking about that guy a warren buffett yeah what does it tell you about deity what like the drinking coke every day yeah. and the bad diets and, and stuff drink and, and and getting to 91 bro Maybe that's the way for longevity <laughs> is lots of coke. Because <laughs> eh? uh, it makes me question a lot of things as well. Like but also, he's super rich. So we don't know what health complications he might have had that just because he's got so much money that he fixes. Or we don't know how many like IV drips. He could, he could go on like an IV drip every morning and pump himself full of nutrients. He could be doing all of these things because he's got so much money. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To counteract the bad stuff from the coke and the mcdonald's and all of that but don't you think like you know sometimes uh like the media exaggerates things like i think the media could also be accentuating how bad his lifestyle health lifestyle is like, like, unhealthy like, like, yeah like, like like the fast food as well yes because they also make money out of it yeah yeah that's the thing we don't know I mean, also, if, if you read an article warren buffett eats mcdonald's every single meal of every day or Warren Buffett eats a chicken breast. You're going to click on the McDonald's article. True. So that's it's also just that's the news that's trying to provide a story. I mean, I was reading an article where it was, it said something like Henry Cavill was dismissed from The Witcher because of a toxic gaming lifestyle. Uh -huh. And then you read the article and it has nothing actually to do about yeah, a toxic gaming yeah. lifestyle. They just or some headline to get clicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Whereas the attention. article was not really anything about him actually having a toxic gamer lifestyle or whatever. Yeah, and, and that, that takes me to uh, think that, you know, we all have the responsibility now to actually tailor make our lives. How? Like, I feel like I, I, if if my body permits me to eat like McDonald's mm. two times a day and I still feel good and I still train and I enjoy. Because one of the things that I picked up from that article, the guy say that he enjoys his meal like a six year old. Mm. And he said he's been doing that for like, bruh, decades and decades. And that thing pumps him to feel better. Because when you feel good, bro, when you eat some nice food, you're going to do what you want. Yeah. The, the only challenge when you become addicted to that, I think, because you're going to consume more mm. and you're going to probably abuse it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you in terms of if you do something that's conventionally unhealthy, but it makes you happier, makes you more inspired, it makes you work harder. Mm -hmm. What's really the problem with it? Like, yes, Warren Buffett might have high body fat but he's not trying to have a low body fat yeah he's motivated to go look at more investments and he's motivated to think with a different mindset because he's brought back to being a six-year-old kid when mm. he has a mcdonald's meal so who are we to say he's so bad or that's not good when he's still making great investments so he's still doing certain things just because it's not in our view healthy yeah, yeah. what does it make it better or worse yeah, and, I, and the fact that, you know, I, I always, you know, I get inspired by people that are, you know, probably in a very, um, you know, like, uh, eight, like uh, let's say like you know, when someone is over 50s and 60s and they're still active mm. and uh, they're still like, uh, he's a high performer, like it mm. or not. Yeah. You understand? And it's not like he's moving in a wheelchair, bro. So yeah. He's 91, but he can still... He doesn't look that terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it shows that, you know, if you wake up and you decide to tailor make your life and you do what you want and, you know, you don't have to listen to everything that comes in your head because everything is confusing right now. Bro. Yeah. You eat this, it's not allowed. You, you eat this, you look at another uh, like article, no, you're not supposed to have this. So I think one should take responsibility of their lives. And yeah. You, you just have to like to probably shadow some people that you want to look like and you start doing things that they do. Yeah, and I think it's also trying things out for yourself. True. Seeing what works for you, because everyone's body is different. What works for me could work differently for mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. My, You could work better in the evening. I could work better in the morning. True. Just because I say I wake up at 4 a.m. doesn't mean you're going to be better at 4 a.m. Like, you could be better in the evening. I'm terrible at the evening. So just because I'm waking up early or someone else is working late... Yeah. doesn't make me better than them or them better than me. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. finding what works for you. If you work better late at night, 
do that and wake up late in the morning. It's all about the net gain at the end of the day. Like if you, I was actually watching a video um, where someone was saying in terms of work now, okay. work, work, work um, performance and everything. Yeah. Where in like the hiring process where they were say, he was saying, he used to always think that, you know, you shouldn't hire an overweight person because it doesn't show discipline and hard work in their life. Okay. But how many successful people in business do you know yeah, yeah, yeah. that don't have any discipline when it comes to food? True. How many people do you know that have amazing discipline with food, but have no discipline with work? So it doesn't mean like just because you're disciplined with your diet yeah. that you'll be disciplined in other aspects of your True. life. You could be a severely overweight person and still work extremely hard yeah, on yeah. your job. Yeah. So, you know, looking how someone looks physically doesn't always attribute to how hard they'll work in totality of yeah. their life. Yeah, and also society makes us think like that. Yeah. You know, we should always, you know, respect people with how they look and, and actually the results that they give up because we all not going to be the same because mm. like, I feel like, you know, right now people want, want everyone to be uniform, which takes away the beauty of life. Yeah. We should come in different colors, different sizes, and that's how life should be. Yeah. And that's what makes life special is yeah. that there's lots of difference. Yeah. Nothing's the same. If everything was the same, it'd be boring. Yeah. So th the beauty of life is when we have different things. You know, and I, and I think now with with, so, with the social media and uh, you know the the media as well, like s giving us a certain way of living and you know certain narratives that we should follow. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, it's now your responsibility as a person to be happy, to find things that make you happy, to go there out of all this junk that is given to us. Because right now, what social media does, power, bro, it powers everything to you, bro. And by the time you finish scoring, you're overwhelmed. Mm. And the funny thing, you need to pick up a few nuggets to help you live the better life. Because there's good things on social media or on the media, but you have to be selective enough mm. to take what's really important to you and stick on that. Yeah, that's the thing with social media is there can be so much good from it. It's not just negative. You just need to audit what you put on your phone or what the algorithm is feeding you. Yeah. If you're just looking at girls in bikinis or you're just looking at – rich people driving nice cars and saying this is what life is yeah, yeah then you might become negative about your own life but if you are looking at motivational stuff where people are making you you know and take action and take you know watching videos that be like you i'm actually inspired that that was motivating not oh i wish i could have that girl or oh i wish i could have that car Ugh, well I, i'm never going to so, so it's all just about what you actually consuming. Like it's not bad to be on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's your purpose for it. If you are watching a video on the benefits of sodium, that's okay. good because you can learn from it. True. But if you are watching, I don't know, some <laughs> gossip channel or something, then yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it can be negative. Uh, uh, talking about that, what are you now? Um, who are the people that you follow? Like in terms of, you know, you love their content and yeah. actually uh, on like Instagram or YouTube or uh, different platforms. Yeah. So I really enjoy, um, in terms of podcasts, I really enjoy watching and listening to, it's called Armchair okay. Experts with Dak Shepard because he interviews celebrities and okay. like he, he did a really great interview with Terry Crews. Okay. Where he was talking, Terry Crews was talking about his porn addiction and talking about, you know, how damaged his life. And it's just nice to hear like celebrities yeah. that are in the public eye who go through challenges and have overcome them and become better. So that's really cool. And then like he's interviewed lots of people. I was listening to one at Robert Downey Jr. talking a little bit about his addiction and all of that. So that was cool. Um, obviously, Joe Rogan. I really enjoy Joe Rogan's podcasts. Um, there's a podcast that I watch. So there's a show on Disney Plus called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. It's an hilarious show. And the creators of the show and the actors have a podcast where they discuss the process of each episode. So they'll oh, talk yeah. about the how they wrote the episode, how yeah. they filmed. They talk about the director for the episode. So that's really cool because I really enjoy, you know, the cinematography and all of that aspect of it. And in terms of Instagram, I... Yo, I don't really have like a creator that I think about. Yeah. But when I go through my reels, it's all like these business reels and it's oh, all yeah. like these 
inspirational real like uh, andrew huberman obviously like i yeah. really enjoy andrew huberman stuff because it's always very insightful too, yeah, yeah it's always you know every like even if it's a 60 second reel you know it's really good and it's insightful i enjoy animal even just like animal videos of like Me too, bro. Oh, yeah <laughs> and it's like even yeah. like if it's just a lion hunting something or it's a leopard stalking something like it's just cool to see how beautiful nature is yeah yeah so yeah. those kind of things i like, guess i'm not inspired but it, like it humbles you, it puts life in perspective that like that's a leopard. I'm a human. We're not really different. Like yes, we're different species, but that leopard is as important to the universe as what I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and you? I think uh, I'm into like more like your Alex Homizi, mm -hmm. uh, Gary V. Yeah. Then I go into fitness. Yes. And uh, I don't usually want to follow like celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. I want to follow like in normal, ordinary people. Yes. But do things that I enjoy. So in terms of like fitness people, what type of, fit, like what guys do you I want? don't even know their names. I don't want to lie. It's, it, I'm going to follow a random girl that is doing something yeah, that is, yeah, you know, yeah. something amazing. Then I'm going to start maybe looking at what she does. Yes, yes. And then I'm going to probably... You know, the, 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 the feed always brings some yes. different things. And that's things. what's interesting about social yeah. media is you can get... So into someone's life, and then someone asks you what their name is, you're like, actually, I don't even yeah, know their I, name. I, but I follow Mike Thurst. Yes, yes, yeah, Mike yeah. Thurston, yeah, yeah. Yeah, much as, you know, he has this aesthetic life, but he still gives you something to, you know, be inspired about, yes. you know. I like how he moves, and yeah, like, I think he's good. But I'll, but more basically, I do probably quotes as well, mm. you know, probably like uh, when I'm tired. Just want to go scroll and you know see a few quotes you know from books because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna read all the books. Yeah. But if I can pick up those like pick up some nuggets. From yeah, that that is what's nice is like if it's just like three lines and it's a quote. Yeah. And then it like leaves an impact because yeah. it's just that you don't have to sort through a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So that's what I do. But uh, like I said, you know, if you can usually go to social media and take what's really important to you mm. and leave the rest, that's good. But the challenge now. The thing's so addictive. Yeah. And the people behind it, they know, bro, what they're doing. Yeah. So you're not just going to be like, oh, all of a sudden you're going to see something that's going to distract you. I love sports. Mm. I'm there, but I see What some, sports? Every, bro, everything sports. Because sometimes I, I watch tennis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, golf, I try to understand it, but uh, I'm, you know, I, I like I'm in the process of learning it. Mm -hmm. Soccer, obviously. Everything, bro. When it's basketball and I see a reel about basketball, I'm gonna like yeah. Stop. When it's when it's like some hectic, you know, move or yeah, I'm gonna stop for a while. Yeah, and it's it's fascinating because it's so incredible what they're doing. You know, I I don't I don't watch rugby on TV, but sometimes on my feed, yeah, some rugby move, some play comes in or some interception try, and I watch it. I'm like, yo, that is so cool. Yeah, because it's like the little highlight, the snippet, the you know, the one piece of excellence and it's just incredible and it's just like yo i appreciate that like i understand rugby i'm not the biggest rugby fan i didn't i don't watch games on the weekend but like when i see that i'm like that is so cool yeah and 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 that's the the, the fun part about it but but the thing is like when you drop that fun mm. your side mm. like i like i find it now I, i'm always you know every day i wake up i find like you know i have to be with my phone but i, I feel like this thing is also a problem yeah you don't want it to control you like i'll go through a stage where i'll go to the bathroom and take a pee while i'm peeing i'm scrolling on my phone and i'm like no but why what am i doing <laughs> or you get up to walk to the kitchen you pick up your phone and you're scrolling on instagram while you walk into the kitchen and you're not alone bro yeah exactly so it's it's funny man like because I, I i like the thing we're not robots i struggle a lot with my phone and I tell myself, because the best thing, like, I wake up and I tell myself, this thing, you have to be in control. Mm. Not let it be in control. Because I cause I used for business, bro. Yeah. You know, and and I cut off a lot of things. I'm sure you're the same. You don't mm. want always to reply to everything. Yeah. Put notifications off. Still, like we said, you know, people behind it, they know what they're doing, bro. Mm. Like, every time. Now it's time for newsletters. I love newsletters. Did you? Newsletters? Yeah. Um, from like what like newsletters are like you know probably if you follow someone yeah they always come with those weekly newsletters oh uh, yes yes like recaps and like those yeah, and and like emailers well. yeah and yes yeah like and and like, then you find yourself opening up an email yeah and and it's always long bro so i usually keep them for toilet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and at least it's reading 
like it's more beneficial to read an email yeah than just scrolling yeah and not but really also thinking addictive. that is so addictive I, i've got a daily stoic emailer where every day they email you but it's beneficial okay you know so it's talks like i mean let's go to today's email i'll pull it up on the screen so like they'll yeah. email you okay i might have to go to yesterday's and it was just like Seneca talked over and over again about the importance of adversity, of not embracing the struggles, of of not only embracing the struggles life throws at us, but actively seeking out that difficulty, so you can be stronger and more prepared. He said, as a person who has never been challenged, who always gets their way, is a tragic figure because they have no idea what they're capable of. They are not even close to fulfilling their potential. Yeah. Are you challenging yourself? Do the choices you make push yourself to new heights if you find you're in a velvet rut grab a daily stoic challenge deck to help push yourself to new levels obviously they're trying to sell it but yeah but like the, what's, these, the, what's these, the newsletter about so it's basically about like stoicism okay where like they'll, they'll come with a quote they'll talk about some quote that seneca or marcus aurelius said or whatever oh yeah and then they'll imply Im, implement it into our daily lives yeah and then they'll have like a link to a youtube video where it's like bold strength and then like there's a youtube video on stoicism and stuff so like that kind of stuff's beneficial like yeah. yes it's still social media and it's still you know going to a youtube video and it's still okay well look at this instagram page whatever but it's like i mean this one was about embracing struggle in your life which yeah. you spoke about earlier yeah so like those things are beneficial even though it's more social media it's still making you think and making you actively you know tailor your life yeah i i feel like you know with with social media like say we we need to be very very selective to understand that you know does the time i spend on social media pay me off because we're all guilty no one is like you know going to say that you know i'm perfect with social media mm. we all go there and we most of the time we waste time and it's addictive yeah no one can escape it i'm sure even the people on top they yeah. still go and scroll bro i saw a thing with mark um zuckerberg was like he doesn't allow his kids on on social media or something along those lines and i think if the creator of a social media platform yeah, cuz tells you that he's not allowing his children on the platform that's how funny it then is then it bro. shows that the platform can't be that good in terms of like he knows how addictive it is or he knows the bad aspects of it but also not allowing your kids to be on social media is also going to make them a target for bullying or whatever because people might bully them like haha your dad created yeah. social media doesn't allow you on social media or there's just going to be some there's definitely going to be some negative from not allowing your kids on social media like that's i think it, as parents it's very difficult in today's society well i think there's always been obviously there's always been challenges as parents but at like what point do you allow them to have instagram and you're going to be dad one day yeah yeah so you need also to think about it's tough that. it's yeah. difficult and i mean when when we have kids social media and it's going to be different so game. different it's going to be a different game yeah yeah but like i said you know like it starts in your home bro mm. I, i i think like you have to tailor your life from if you have a family you have to do things accordingly how, how would you do it now if you had like a 10 year old daughter yeah what uh, would you do in terms of allowance i think um i'll let them be creative but i would like allow them to use the phone and the tablets yeah yeah but not for the outside world mm just for creativity. Gary V actually had a great video mm -hmm. where he put up where he was saying, you know, people that think it's so bad for kids to be on technology, mm -hmm. it's silly to not allow your kids access to technology or access to the internet or obviously, you know, within reason because the world's going only towards technology. Yeah. So you holding your kids back from future benefits by understanding how a computer you works you can't fight technology you can't bro. and if you don't allow your kids to ever go on a phone or ever go on a tablet or ever play on a computer technology is going to develop and they're going to get left behind yeah and yeah. the kids aren't going to understand like the gamers of today or the gamers of 10 years ago are the ones that make websites and do you know all the coding and all of that because they understood the technology when it yeah. first came out yeah yeah so yeah. they are the ones that have done well Yeah. and have been able to build with technology and implement new technologies whereas the people that were like no technology is bad i'm going to stay away are the ones that kind of get left behind 
Yeah, you know, Grant said something, Grant Cadon. He said, you know, we need to uh, stop uh, kids from uh, staying away from strangers. Because strangers bring opportunities. Yeah. And you know, you're not going to make money without strangers. Mm. And so, that's the thing now in today's society. I mean, yeah. how much interaction do you have with random people? Yeah. So I think that thing you need to understand, like, you know, when they're still young, prepare them. Mm. Just prepare them how to deal with strangers, how yeah. to deal with things. Let them interact with strangers in a controlled environment. Like, yeah. Don't send them out in the streets. But like if you're in a shopping center and like you're at Starbucks, yeah. And you're you can say to your kid, go talk to that lady, or go like go, uh, play around. Go with, ask with that your, yeah, you, go ask that lady your... for a sugar, or go like, and you watching so you know it's safe, all of that, yeah. or you know get your kid to talk to the the waitress, yeah, true. and ask certain questions or whatever. You don't talk to them like interact like that in a safe, yeah. controlled environment. Yeah. Even on social media, as long as you know they they, they play around with the phone, mm. probably they have their friends in real life. Friends and social media, you're limited. You know, they can still communicate because they're not gonna, always going to be in the same room. Mm. But if they have their friend, make calls to their friend, video call their friends, which they know in real life, it makes, you know, a very, like, healthy environment yeah. for them. You understand? Like, you don't have to be like, ah, oh, hey, that's not good. Yeah. Like, they're still going to grow up and use it. Yeah, I think that's the thing with technology and parents and children is allow them on social media, but also maybe say, you know, I'm going to check your phone every now and then which you should i'm going to you know cap or i'm going to obviously have like a child lock on or whatever like yeah or, on like kids youtube or those kind of things but still sometimes some weird videos still get up on kids youtube true 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 and i think now that's a room for creators to create platforms for kids yeah like basically that are for kids and they can like enjoy. a cartoon network app where there's like just yeah. kid creative videos or something what's up with the metaverse bro it's here yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, you can go into Metaverse and create something that's true. for kids. Some like virtual reality playground for kids. Yeah. Where you can wear like a headset and you can interact with other kids. But also then you're going to get some creeps <laughs> that are going to pretend they're yeah, kids. kids. Well, like like I said, you know, the bad things always going to be there. And yeah, we need they them. Because now you know how to like yeah. add up something. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if there wasn't bad things, you wouldn't need a kid's YouTube yeah, so we, then more people wouldn't have had jobs to create kids YouTube or, you know, so like, let's say that virtual reality playground. Yeah. If things were always safe, you wouldn't need protection. You wouldn't need certain limitations for letting old men onto the platform. But now that because people are creeps, you need to have stricter methods of access to it. Yeah. So yeah. it's develop people to think differently and think harder and be more creative which has been, which will benefit in the end. Yeah, we needed the lion in the old ages to move and, you know, to develop our human mind. So, like, we still have that old, you know, mm. age mind, you know. So we need to have to, you know, to actually be careful of the lions because they're still going to be around. I'm sure, you know, it's all those predators that made us create the houses that we have, you know, from mm. there. Then we, we create fences, you know. So even in the tech world, you're still going to ha need those hackers to be around. Yeah. You know, because they help you to create more firewalls and stuff like that. Yeah, to make it safer, to make it more effective. Yeah. To make it stand the test of time. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, bro? I don't know, bro. If anything else you want to chat about? No, like, you can go deeper about life, man. Like, uh, I enjoy how you your perspective about life, especially. You know, you mentioned about this relationship thing. And um, uh, your side, how do you see how people nowadays view relationships in terms of, you know, is it about money? Is it about social media? Is it about finding someone to grow with? What is it about? For me or what I've observed other people? From your side, from your perspective, yeah. what you have observed from okay, your side okay. and also what you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me personally, I actually prefer, would prefer being with a woman that doesn't feel the need to always be posting on social media. For me, it's nicer when a, <laughs> when a girl like is confident enough in herself to not have to portray some false narrative on social media. So it's nicer when a girl posts now and then, posts stories, whatever, but doesn't feel the need to post every single gym session, doesn't oh. feel the need to post, you know, look, I'll, 
in this car today or doesn't feel the need to show every single coffee shop that she's going to. And like, for me, it's nice when a girl is confident and enough in herself to live her life without social media. Like, yes, use social media, but for me, I would rather go for the girl that's less on social media than actively post, 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 post on social media. Does it turn you off? It doesn't turn me off and it wouldn't stop me from like getting involved with a girl or whatever. Mm -hmm. But just sometimes... It's too much. Too much posting is often correlated with more of an addiction to social media. True. So I don't want to be sitting with a girl... Let's say we're watching TV, watching yeah. a movie. I get up to go to the bathroom. The moment I get up, she picks up her phone and goes and on happens Instagram. Lot, yeah? It happens. I've had it happen with me, you know? So I don't want that with a girl. So when a girl's not post, like with the moment I get up, I don't want her to look how many likes are on her photo. Oh, how, Who's watching my story? Like yeah, for me, yeah. that's kind of like a turn off for me. So the, in that aspect, in that regard, I prefer a girl that isn't constantly posting and constantly trying to get more followers. And obviously if she runs a business or social media, different story. Yeah. yeah but yeah. if it's just, I want to see which people are watching my story or my gym selfie of my bum. Like for me, that's kind of like yeah, yeah, not yeah. my cup of tea. But if I really liked a girl and she did do that, it wouldn't be the end of the world, you know? But I've seen in terms of other people, and I read an interesting thing where, I don't know how true the article was, but it said... The couples that, because but it was done at some university, the couples that post their relationship less on social media are usually happier. True. I would think yeah, so. Yeah, I would also think so. Because yeah. the moment you're always posting every date, every meal together, a gym selfie together every day, yeah, you're trying to p portray something. And you need validation. Yes, that's, exactly. That's the thing. You're yeah. looking for validation. You're looking to make people jealous or you're looking for something like I know the happier I've been, the happier mindset I've been in is I don't feel the need to post something true, on social true, media. True, true. Because I'm not, like if I, I've caught myself like loading a shirtless selfie or whatever about a post-it yeah. and then I catch myself thinking like, why am I doing this? Bro, am me I, too. Some, most times I'm like, ah, no, let, let me just Yeah, let then just you stop it. because you say, am I just doing this? Am I just posting a shirtless photo on Instagram to get someone's validation? Am I just posting a photo after a workout to impress someone, to get validation? Why am I posting a photo of my watch that I just ran 20Ks? Why? Am I trying to impress people? What's the actual reason for this? Let me ask a question on that. I have realized from my side, people that have more, they want to, you know... Um, show that they have lace and people that have lace want to show they have more um, yeah and i don't know why because it's actually automatically in our heads i think maybe people that have more sometimes also feel bad or they feel guilty that they're so blessed that they might show less yeah you know you've got a very nice car i've never seen anything about your car so you're not there trying to show that you've got this nice land rover you're not trying to show people you know, you've got this, you've got that, you know, because you realize, okay, I've got a nice car, I'm blessed with it. Yeah. I don't need to try and prove to someone something, you know, like now, most people on social media, those people that you see with fancy cars in Dubai, they don't own that car. True, true. They're renting it for the day. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just trying to put on this fake persona. And, uh, and, and I, and I like, uh, I was, I was around people actually, I would say. And there was like, you know, those things of like, oh, this person looks this way. This person looks this way. And I like back in my head, I actually, I, I, I tried to speak to them because we were close. Like, you know, guys, stop mentioning how people look, you know, because yes, you look good. That's a privilege. You know, you already have it. Why mm -hmm. do you want to, you know, buy someone of something you already have? I think that would just make you feel small, actually. Because mm -hmm. when you have something you're already privileged. So you don't have to sit on someone to show them that, oh, I'm this person. Yeah. Because, you know, it's always good for a big person to help the small one. Yeah. So in every situation that you're in, whether it looks, you know, you shouldn't have on someone like, oh, this person looks this way. Because I mean, like, you know, it doesn't make sense. You already have it. Mm. So what you mentioned is so good. Like, I feel guilty for that because I post on social media. I post. But like you said, I question myself a lot of times. Which I think that's the good thing. 
The, yeah. At least you're questioning. Yeah. At least you're actively thinking, what are my intentions with this particular post? Which yeah. I think is healthier and it shows more introspection. And you're able to look at yourself and your true intentions. Yeah. Even if you do end up posting it, at least you've gone through the thought process. The intention. And then once you've done it, yes, maybe you've done it, but then you think back like, okay, I know that time I was just, I wanted that girl to see my body or I wanted this or I wanted that. Yeah. Then the next time maybe you can learn from it and grow. Yeah, and the feedback, because, you know, I would say like, you know, the feedback matters as well. Yeah. And the intention why you're doing it. And like you said, am I doing it for like, you know, the hoo-hoos and uh, mm. or am I doing it just because I feel like, you know, I have a best of people that I, you know, oh, I do it if, for myself. Yes, yes. You know, if well. you're doing it, you know that people find motivation through you know, doing it, the then it's cool. Yeah, and also doing it for, like, I do shit for myself. Yeah. Like, because, or like, let's say if I post things on, on, on my social media, on my WhatsApp, on my status, the quotes I post, to be honest, they're my, for myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel motivated when I read it. When it's on my status. Yes. For some reasons, I don't yes. know, but that's how I feel. Like putting it out there makes you think about it more. True. I understand that completely. Like sometimes I'll post a quote and I'll think, am I doing this to get people to think that I think a particular way? And then I post it. I'm like, you know, I'm not doing it for someone else. Even if no one had to read it, just by me putting it out there makes it more of a reality or makes me understand it better or makes me implement it better by putting it on my story. Yeah, I feel good in the morning when I make my quotes out because it, it, like you watch it, it's up to you. If it inspires you, good for you. Yeah. But I put it there for myself. For you, yeah. Yeah, because I read it, I found it interesting and I put it there. Yeah. So if someone that really has the same mindset like me find it as well, I'm good for it. With quotes that works like that, but... I don't think like shirtless photos would work like that. What do you mean? Like if I had to post a photo of a gym selfie. Yeah. It's never for me. It's never going to, sure. to motivate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if yeah, I yeah, do a right cool there. gym video where I've explored my creativity, then yeah. it's for myself. But yeah, if yeah. I've just done a video to show my abs, it's not for me. It's, to, or it's for me, but for trying to get the world's validation. You're right there. Like, you're right. It's, it, I think it's relative in there. Yeah. And you're right as well because, you know, even the hex, bro, like, uh, for sometimes, you know, I believe people have bad eyes. And I don't believe too much into, like, you know, traditional spiritual stuff. But I believe, like, like as humans, we have the energy to destroy things. Mm -hmm. Just energy. Because we have the energy to do things. You know what I mean? And I feel like, you know, the more you put your life out there, you actually attracting the like, the bad energy to mm, come after mm. you. You understand? So, like you mentioned, you know, you always want to be with a person who actually a bit private. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, you don't want to always have your life out there. Yeah, yeah. And it's also tough because sometimes you want people to see your happiness, but then you're that's the wrong way of actually trying to be happy. Like yeah, if you yeah. are really in love, and you're proud of the person. They're indifferent. Like if you're really proud to be with a girl and you think she's the most beautiful girl on earth, so you post her in your story, that's because you're proud. But there's a difference where you're posting to try prove something to your ex or yeah, prove yeah. something to this guy or like then it's wrong. But if you are just so happy to be with the person, you're proud of them yeah. and you're proud that you are able to be with them and you post it, then it's cool, obviously. I, I like I've never found the need to post my person on social media. For some reason, I feel like love and family should be a bit like, you know. But there's also the private. one thing where the girl could get upset that you're like, why aren't you posting me on your story? Are you talking to other <laughs> girls? You don't want them to know you're in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's something they should discuss. And also, yeah. I think it's okay to actually be you. Because mm. I feel like when you're in a relationship, uh, I was talking to my friend last time, like if most people have this complaint, like when you get a, when you get to be married, you're going to change, your body's going to change because now your spouse is going to be making food for you, stuff like that. You're going to have that daddy body and stuff. I'm like, you know what? I get into a relationship with my principles, with my routine. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can play around to see how we can, you know, adjust. If but you you're things. not going to lose yourself. Yeah, because I'm not in there. We're just there to be partners, mm -hmm. support me. Make to accentuate and to push up each other's strengths. Yeah, actually make me better. Yeah. If I'm like this, 
um, are you going to help me actually become better? Because I'm playing it for the long time. Yeah. It's longevity, bro. How is my spouse going to help me to actually um, put off some load of me preparing some stuff that actually could make it easier for me to have my lifestyle go on for a long time? You mm. understand? So I think when you go there, I'm like, hey, girl, I do love you and this, 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 but I'm not this kind of person who actually loves to post my life mm. on social media you can post my toes i'm okay with it <laughs> yeah uh, my legs yeah, but yeah, yeah don't put me there yeah because it puts pressure on you as well yeah okay? and uh yeah that's how i see it man i'm glad you shared that awesome yeah well yeah. bro there's an hour that was a good chat no worries man you can go with that, that was awesome yeah thanks very much bro all it right was, it was nice to chat with you good buddy thanks man Cheers, guys. <laughs>